Every year, millions of imperfect babies are born, destined for a life of struggle and hardship. But it is the rest of us who pay the ultimate cost. Billions of dollars that could be used to better society are instead wasted on the malformed. There must be a better way. And there is. Agenda 21 is coming soon. The Earth just cannot handle the sheer number of humans who live here. Something has to give. And I believe that it's up to us who have lived a good life to make sure that our children will have the opportunity to live good lives too. I have lived a good life. 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 For millions of years, this lake thrived, but now it is dying, poisoned by humans who put themselves above nature. It's time to stop the killing. It's time to heal our planet. It's time to remove your footprint. Agenda 21 is coming soon. And then ads that you haven't seen any place else. And really spooky ads that you haven't seen any place else. Why would they be running on my network? Now, I'd like to invite you before someone would cancel their subscription. Think of the world we live in now. Think of the world we live in. You've known me for how long? You trust me enough to subscribe to my network. And yet, you would get online to send me an electronic message saying how angry you are at me for taking the money to further the UN agenda. That's amazing. What a dirtbag sellout I am. Or, one of these things just doesn't belong. So instead of typing an email, I might go to Google, which I also has, have recommended not to use. And I might Google Agenda 21 Glenn Beck. We are spending a lot of money on the malform, though. <laughs> we should should talk about that. Is, that. You make a good case. You know, when you so, say it that way, you do money. make it. Play that commercial again, will you? It's Every really disturbing. Year, millions of imperfect babies are born, destined for a life of struggle and hardship. But it is the rest of us who pay the ultimate cost. Billions of dollars that could be used to better society are instead wasted on the malformed. There must be a better way. And there is. Agenda 21 is coming soon. Wow, that sounds spooky. Mm. Bring up a lot of good points, though. Mm -hmm. It really does. Really only one. It really does. And that's kind of that we shouldn't spend money on babies. Well, but also <laughs> the other one. We shouldn't <laughs> spend money on on old, on old people, old people. It looks, it looks which is life. weird it because life. that's not agenda 21 as much as it is the complete life system as well hmm. Hmm. <laughs> isn't that strange weird of course it was the same kind of concept the eugenesis uh... that's why i'm so confused by you running these commercials <laughs> <laughs> why really yeah huh. yeah i can't figure it out i wish there was some way you could figure that out I wish there were, you but know, uh, apparently yeah, there's not. There must be a better way. There, there must and be there a better way. It's, it's Agenda 21. It's Agenda 21. It's oh. coming soon. It's oh, a better perfect. way. Agenda 21 coming way. soon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyway.
Uh, thanks for uh, thanks for the um, the email. Appreciate it. The myth of overpopulation originated in England in 1798 when a vicar named Thomas Malthus, who fancied himself something of a mathematician, saw that food production increased incrementally, but people reproduced exponentially. He sat down and did some simple math, and summarily decided that the world would be out of food by 1890. He blamed reduced mortality rates, and recommended killing off the have-nots of society, lest the haves starve to death. This cry was taken up by Paul Ehrlich of Stanford University in 1968, who claimed that reckless human reproduction had overwhelmed the Earth. Massive famines would result, which would destroy, best case scenario, one-fifth of humanity by the end of the 70s. And the planet would follow. This fear produced large donations for the newly created UNFPA, which thrives on an imagined crisis that has been both imminent and rescheduled again and again over the past two centuries. The truth of the matter is that every family on this planet could have a house with a yard and all live together on a landmass the size of Texas, which is really just a small corner of the planet. The population of Earth will peak in 30 years and then start to go back down. We're not overpopulated. Do the math. From the time of the cavemen all the way until today, humanity continues to exist because each generation of people has produced another generation to replace itself. Scientists have figured out how many people need to be born each generation to replace the generation before. That number is one person per person. All things being equal, this creates perfect demographic balance. Since women are the only ones who can have children, replacing every person on Earth means each woman needs to have two children, one to replace her and the other to replace the man who cannot have children. The total fertility rate is the average number of children each woman in a society is having. This number shows us if a society is growing or shrinking. In developed countries, the replacement rate birth rate is 2.1 children per woman. This will keep the population stable, but even that is assuming that every woman has children and that there are no wars, famines, or disease. In the real world, disasters happen all the time, and sadly not all children reach adulthood especially in poor countries. This pushes their replacement rate up to 3.3 children per woman. Since not every woman wants to have children, in order to keep the population stable, some women need to have more than 2.1 children to balance the birth rate with the women who are only having one or no children at all. Maintaining this balance is of the utmost importance. If society does not at least replace itself every generation, human numbers begin to fall exponentially. Economic and social problems appear, as elderly people retiring begin to outnumber young people entering the workplace. This is already happening all over the developed world. Many of the world's nations are only barely replacing themselves, while a growing majority have birth rates below replacement, some as low as 1.8 or even 1.2 babies per woman. Many societies are facing a very real danger. Extinction. According to believers in overpopulation, there are so many of us on the planet that food production cannot possibly keep up. However, according to both the UN's Food and Agricultural Organization and the World Food Program, there is currently enough food on the planet for everyone to be well fed. Not only that, but we're growing this food on less land than we did in the past. This is why in the United States, for example, the government can afford to pay farmers not to grow food, but instead return their farmland to the wild. Modern technology also allows us to grow food on land where it would have been impossible to do so, even a few years ago. Agricultural experts even believe that Africa, if cultivated using modern farming methods, could eventually feed the whole world, all by itself. Then why are people in many parts of the world starving? The World Food Program lists key causes of hunger, and overpopulation is not on that list. War, one of the leading causes of world hunger, destroys crops and disrupts relief efforts. Widespread poverty prevents many from buying the food that they need. And a lack of infrastructure means that there isn't a reliable way to transport food to areas that need it. This is why reducing the number of hungry people will not make the remaining people less hungry. 
Those who have access to the food will continue to have access to it, and those who don't will still be hungry. Reducing population will not magically cause food to be spread around equally. And blaming overpopulation for everything does nothing but distract us from the real problems that we actually have. Think about it. When human beings first showed up on this planet, there weren't very many of us. And we faced a hard life of meeting our basic needs. Chances are, early humans spent a good deal of time hungry, cold, and without shelter. That is to say, poor. According to the World Bank, poverty is when people are deprived of well-being as a result of low income and aren't able to get the basic goods that they need for survival with dignity. How did any of the human race advance beyond poverty? We kept multiplying, and we formed communities. In communities, people stop spending all their time on simple survival, and are able to do things like divide up tasks, share resources, and pool their mental energies to come up with creative solutions to problems. These communities started with families, then grew into extended families, entire tribes, and then finally cities and nations. So what effect has this growth had on poverty? According to demographers, a very good one. In fact, history shows that as our numbers have grown, so has our average standard of living. Scientists measure this standard in everything from per capita income, to average amount of calories consumed, even average height. And all of these averages have been increasing. Even though poverty still exists, the percentage of poor people has actually decreased as population has grown. The reason for this is that human beings are not simply consumers, we are producers. This is why, over the ages, we have learned how to do things like produce more food on less land, find better energy sources, and make sure that more people have enough to eat and a roof over their heads. And this is also why, though urban poverty is still a huge problem, statistics show that the poor who move to large communities actually have better chances of rising from poverty than they did in areas where there were fewer jobs and less opportunity. For this reason, poverty is a problem that is not solved by eliminating people. Poverty has always been a problem, even when there were scarcely any people on the entire planet. People are the only proven way out of poverty. Removing them will only leave the poor right where they started. Think about it. At some point in the year 2011, the Earth will hold 7 billion people on its surface, more people than any point in recorded history. While some welcome this latest member of humanity with excitement, others with fear. When people hear that we've been adding 1 billion people every 15 years, they imagine humanity's growth to look something like this. But 1 billion people isn't as high a percentage of humanity as it used to be. For instance, imagine this roller coaster car represents 1 billion people. If we add another car, or 1 billion more people, our train has doubled in length. But if we want to double the train again, we can't just add one more train car. We'd have to add two. Every time we make the train longer, one train car represents a smaller and smaller percentage of the train. If it takes 15 years to add each new train car, then mathematically speaking, the growth rate is slowing. In order for the growth rate to stay constant, the train would have to keep doubling every 15 years, instead of just adding one car. Human population growth is the same way. In 1804, the world's population hit 1 billion. By 1927, that number had doubled. But by 1960, that number had only grown by half. By 1975, it was only growing by a third, and then a fourth, and then a fifth. To see how population growth is slowing down, we look at a number called the Global Total Fertility Rate, which is the average number of children each woman is having. And over the last 40 years, that rate has been rapidly falling. According to the UN's current data, the world's population is due to peak in 25 years. After it peaks, it will start to go down. By the end of the century, we'll be losing 1 billion people every 20 years. This year, the world's population will hit 7 billion. In 75 years, we'll be back here again. Think about it.